what are the 16 personalities like at their best? You know, when we talk about the 16 personalities, we usually fall back on their baseline. So by that, I mean not unhealthy versions of the types, but also not extremely developed versions of them either. Stereotypical, basically. ESTJs are telling you what to do. ISFPs are artistic. INTPs wear glasses. You get the point. But we don't often talk about what each type looks like at their best when they are mature and developed and have risen above some of the usual stereotypes. ESTPs at their absolute best are going to be action first thinkers, but not so much that their impulsiveness gets them into trouble. Now one of the benefits of being a thinking type is that as they develop, they tend to learn to look before they leap when it comes to new or difficult situations. Less developed ESTPs might jump headfirst into any problem that arises, but a more developed one will take just a moment, even if it's not too long of a moment, to consider the logical impacts of their decision. Developed ESTPs also tend to temper their thinking in relation to how harsh it can come off to others. Essentially, they tone down the harshness of their logical words in favor of giving honest but constructive criticism. All right, now ESFPs are still gonna be impulsive individuals who live in the moment when they're at their best. What changes though is that they develop their sense of values and identity as they become more mature, which allows them to make better spontaneous decisions that are in line with what they value. So less developed ESFPs will try to live by what feels right to them, but the problem is that they haven't really taken the time to think through their value system. So the problem with this is that it could often end up with a less developed ESFP getting getting into trouble, or doing something that ultimately goes against what they think is the right thing to do, 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 do <laughs> due to that lack of structure. I had too many do's in a row. <laughs> too much do-do right in the middle of the script, you know what I'm saying? And this is the difficult path that many ESFPs take in order to reach their best. They get into a few tough situations and then they make some questionable decisions that result in them feeling bad, which makes them stop and reflect. And this causes them to change their future actions to reflect what they learn. ISTJs are organized, but not hyper rigid when they're at their best. The less developed ISTJs won't allow anyone to change anything if it goes against the way they think things should be done. Don't mess with it. We got it going. We got things working right. Let's just, uh, just don't, don't, don't touch it. Developed ISTJs learn that it can be okay to deviate from the plan or the schedule. And in fact, sometimes taking a different route can be the most productive direction. At the same time though, a developed ISTJ TJ is gonna know when it is appropriate to ensure that protocol is followed. Cause you probably don't want someone who is open to new ideas or options as like your lawyer. Instead, you want someone who knows the rules and how the system works well enough to maximize your outcome within the system's constraints. But isn't just blindly following protocol. ISFJs spend a lot of time reflecting on their life experiences and when they learn to share what they have learned from those experiences, they can really make an impact on others' lives. Many less developed ISFJs prefer to blend into the background. Like they don't want to make a fuss or start an argument. What the developed ISFJ brings to the table is confidence in their own knowledge and experiences so that they can share that knowledge without being worried about pushback from others who may disagree. ISFJs at their best know that sometimes it's okay or even necessary to make ripples or even waves in the social environment to achieve a better outcome for everyone in the long run. ESTJs at their best have a commanding presence that is almost impossible to ignore, a sharp tongue and a serious demeanor. Now what less developed ESTJs struggle with is not knowing when to limit this commanding attitude. So they end up treating friends, family, employees, the dog walker. They, they treat everyone like they're chefs on Hell's Kitchen who forgot the lamb sauce. So as ESTJs progress towards becoming the best version of themselves, they learn when it's appropriate to go all in and when it might be better to be a little more low key. Maybe I should not explode over the lamb sauce this time. A less developed ESTJ feels confident that they can navigate a situation by verbally slapping around another person. The ESTJ at their best however, realizes that in some situations, <laughs> you can catch more flies with honey than vinegar, as the old saying goes. Now, ENTJs are pretty similar to ESTJs in that their attitude can take over a room. The difference is that for ENTJs, they tend to be far more critical of others' mistakes. Few things frustrate an ENTJ more than someone else making a mistake that the ENTJ sees as having a simple fix. More than any other type, ENTJs can't stand 
and people making more work for themselves than is necessary. Less developed ENTJs will have a very short fuse when it comes to these situations. The ENTJ at their best is one who really learns the value of giving constructive criticism in a way that doesn't come off as a harsh critique or even worse as bullying. While they might not be the most gentle in giving advice, ENTJs have the intuitive thinking skills to identify the overall principles that will guide others to find success. So the ENTJ at their best is one who can patiently explain to others a better way forward. ESFJs at their best are leaders of a community, whether that community is large like a city or small like a family. The ESFJ's goal is to ensure the well-being of those they care about. ESFJs also tend to have the people skills that make them great at navigating social situations that involve many different personalities. One major thing that separates ESFJs at their best from the less developed ones is that they know when to stop and take care of themselves. If the oxygen masks dropped on an airplane, the less developed ESFJ is gonna be the guy who goes, oh my gosh, uh, let me help you get yours on. And 10 seconds later, they're going, I don't feel so good. Cause they didn't put on their own mask. They got hypoxia, man. The ESFJ at their best though, knows that it's important to get their life in order and tend to their own needs before they move on to help others. Just like the ESFJ, the ENFJ usually struggles with not helping themselves before helping others. That said, ENFJs tend to have more general goals when it comes to helping those around them. So basically this means the ESFJ, who we just talked about, is much more practical. They're like, I can help you by cleaning your house for you. ENFJs are more generally focused, like here, I can help you by sharing the principles of finding inner peace and happiness. Cleaning your inner spiritual house. Most ENFJs can spot the flaws in the social spheres they are invested in, whether that's a large group or just one other person. And the ENFJ knows how to address those flaws. In fact, many ENFJs will feel bad if they can't fix a problem that is plaguing those they care about. What separates less developed ENFJs from an ENFJ at their best is that an ENFJ at their best knows it's not their sole responsibility to fix the world or fix the deep problems in the lives of their friends and family. Instead, they learn that doing their best is what truly matters, that a step in the right direction is better than no step at all. And if the problem can't be fixed or someone doesn't want to take their advice, it isn't the ENFJ's fault. There's no type more than the ISTP who can answer the question, does this realistically make sense? A problem many less developed ISTPs face is rigidness in their thinking. They might immediately brush off less than realistic ideas as nonsense that it's not worth any time or investment. Sometimes they'll even brush off realistic ideas just because they didn't think up the idea themselves. That's because ISTPs are also one of the most independent types. The ISTP at their best is one who knows when it's okay to open things up a little bit, to think just a little bit outside the box, and also to know when to swallow their pride and give someone else's ideas a chance. INTPs at their best are logical, creative, and maybe just a bit goofy. These are the types who usually make discoveries or advancements in our understanding of the universe that impact humanity for decades to come. No pressure, INTPs. <laughs> they don't start out like that though, and many less developed INTPs struggle to portray their ideas to others in a way where everyone else can see the value of the INTP's ideas. A less developed INTP might even waste years working on an idea that they never even bothered to check. Uh, is anyone ever gonna care about this? Less developed INTPs are the people who go on a show like Shark Tank and are like, I have the most amazing invention ever. It's a robotic finger that helps you pick your nose and flick it. And the sharks are like, oh, why, why did you bring this to us? This is terrible. So INTPs at their best know how to effectively communicate with others. And not only that, but they are able to understand and appreciate what kind of ideas others are most likely to care about. When they're at their best, ISFPs are fully individualistic people who live moment to moment by their personal morals and ethics, while also respecting other people living by their own morals as well. As they experience more and more throughout their lives, ISFPs tend to latch on to a few beliefs or values that are really important to them. And over time, those become core aspects of their personality. But it can be a problem when other people disagree with those values and less developed ISFPs will find themselves losing friends or getting into heated arguments with others because of this. As the ISFP moves closer to becoming their best though, they appreciate that everyone has 
chart their own path in life, and that others don't need to agree with their own personal beliefs. In other words, they learn that if we have different views of life, even if they're fundamentally different, it's not an attack on the ISFP's identity. The ISFP at their best wants personal freedom for everyone, as long as that personal freedom isn't hurting anyone else. INFPs at their best are empathetic to others, while also maintaining a strong sense of personal identity. To the INFP, living in alignment with their morals is extremely important. The problem they face, though, is that because their morals are often abstract, it's hard for them to find other people who resonate with that exact set of morals. This can cause less developed INFPs to come into conflict with others a lot, and can also lead them to feel very alone, as though they are the only person on Earth who has this particular set of values. This can cause very undeveloped INFPs to become bitter and disengaged with others. At their best, though, INFPs recognize that others can't see their point of view so easily, but that doesn't mean that it needs to be a source of conflict, or even that others disagree with them. It could just mean that many people don't center all of their decisions around the things that they value. An INFP at their best is patient with those who have differing opinions, while also realizing that it might just be best to remove themselves from a situation involving conflicting values instead of butting heads with others. ENFPs have a quality at their best that you might not expect from such an unpredictable type, and that is mentorship. ENFPs are a type that love to live by their values, but they also like to encourage those around them to let loose and follow their own hearts. If a friend or someone they care about is struggling, the ENFP can offer a wide variety of both creative and practical solutions. The ENFP at their best is also going to know when it is important to not jump ship to the new and exciting thing just because it's new and exciting. While change can be good, hastily throwing away a good opportunity for something else can often be unwise, and less developed ENFPs will often find themselves doing just that. So the ENFP at their best is one who is able to determine which opportunities are worth chasing while also being able to inspire those around them to chase their dreams as well. ENTPs at their best are going to be a type that comes up with novel and new ways to think about whatever interests them. In fact, one of the key differences between an ENTP at their best and one who isn't is recognizing when it is important to try to initiate a change. Less developed ENTPs will often try to change things just because. Like, eh, why not? I'm bored. Let's just do something different. A lot of times systems are put into place because they work and while such systems might be annoying to an ENTP, it isn't always the best idea to change them. More developed ENTPs will be more strategic about proposing ideas that will require a large shift in the current environment. Another aspect of ENTPs at their best is that they can be surprisingly charming and approachable. ENTPs at their best tend to be less critical than other thinking types and recognize when it is important to reel in the logic for the sake of social cohesion. That's right, the debater type, he knows what he, what he shouldn't be debating. INTJs at their best are calm, collected, and focused, working with dedication towards a vision for their life that is full of meaning. INTJs are pretty good at finding the most efficient way to accomplish something, and this can set them up to just rock it through life. They set up a goal, boom, they figure out a way to blow it out of the water. The less developed INTJ can spend several years doing this, being outwardly very successful, but ultimately incurring a lot of risk for two reasons. One, because they get so focused on the next thing that they don't bother paying attention to what is happening right now, and that can lead to very practical problems like financial or even health issues. And the second risk is that their heart isn't fully invested in what they're doing. Now I know INTJs are like, what does that matter? Well, it matters because that makes it sustainable. That prevents burnout. An INTJ at their best isn't just speed running through their goals like a video game. They are finding a true purpose in their actions and enjoying the present moment. Many underdeveloped INTJs might say they have a true purpose, but what they're really thinking of is that hit of dopamine that they get generally just from hitting a goal. Might be monetary, might be muscle size, might be subscribers on YouTube, but they don't really care about the actual goals themselves. Just that it is a goal that is accomplished. The INTJ at their best is like, my heart is in the content I'm creating for YouTube, for example. Sure, they still might have a goal like, I want to reach 10 million subscribers, but their personal investment in the day-to-day -day actions and their enjoyment of the process and not just the end goal sets them up to be the most successful of all the INTJs. Most known for their reserved nature and empathy, the INFJ at their best is the type of person who puts a lot of energy into achieving not only their own vision for the future, but also 
helping those they care about achieve theirs as well. INFJs can usually take a problem a friend is facing and guide them through the steps on how to solve it while also being careful and considerate of their feelings. Less developed INFJs often lack the confidence or assertiveness to bring their own vision to life if it is in conflict with others though. So you'll see a lot of INFJs who can give you advice all day long about, you know, like going after what you want in life, but then they have 10 reasons for why they feel like they're not allowed to go after what they want in life. And usually those reasons are something like, well, I don't want to upset this other person or I don't want to leave behind my friends or, and this is the most common, I don't want to have to change my life that much to go after that vision. More developed INFJs though, you might say the INFJs at their best, because that's the title of this video, they practice what they preach, man. Not only can they give you good advice, but they can give themselves good advice and then make the necessary and often uncomfortable changes in their lives to follow through. It's interesting to me because INFJs usually don't need to experience something firsthand to be able to give you advice about it. This is an advantage for the INFJs because when they're at their best, they're getting all this great advice from themselves about situations they've never even experienced before. They're gaming the system at their best. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay cool and attractive. They say a stranger's come to town.